Hi, it's West and I, and today we have the brand new M1 Mac Mini right here in the studio. We are going to be seeing if this computer is faster than my 2012 MacBook Pro for editing. I've been using that computer for over three years now, and it has done really good, surprisingly, for a 2012 MacBook. But it's been showing its age. We've been editing A7S 3 footage on there, and we've been editing all sorts of stuff, and it's starting to choke. It's not really rendering things out very fast, and it's not really editing fast. It is a nightmare having to edit on that thing because the timeline does not scrub in real time. It's super clunky. Every, it's just not good. So we're going to see if this M1 Mac Mini is as good as they are saying it is. So right here, right now, we're going to unbox this thing and see what's inside. Trusty knife, and we're gonna open it. Ah, okay, almost cut myself. Um, okay, we got the plastic off, that's what matters, and there we go. Get out of here. Okay, moment of truth. We're gonna open it right here, right now. That is so satisfying. All right, there's the box. And there it is. Oh, it looks so good. They even give you a little pull tab so you can launch the thing. Exactly what I want to do. No, we got our stuff. We'll find out what that is here in just a second. But look at this thing. Oh, looks so good. Okay. Let's pull. Ooh. Look at that. It says Mac Mini on the bottom. I'll definitely be reading that every day. Uh, but look at this. It looks so good. Look at the ports. So this is actually really cool. Uh, even though it's a new Mac, which you'd think, oh, basically there's gonna be one Thunderbolt port, right? No, no, we've got, uh, we've got two Thunderbolt ports. We've got an HDMI, full-size HDMI. We've got our USBs, just old fashioned ones there. Uh, and we've got an ethernet port and the charging port and I guess it's not a charging port It's just AC. There's no battery in here. And then we got power. So look at that So small yet so powerful. I sound like an Apple sales rep, but this Should Speed up the workflow. So we're gonna take it back to the studio. We're gonna set it up We're gonna plug it into a monitor get the magic keyboard out get it all set up and then we'll start installing stuff and we'll see what we can do. We're gonna see if we can get Adobe Premiere on there. Right now it's apparently in beta, so we're gonna see if we can actually edit on this thing and we're gonna see if it's any faster than my 2012 MacBook Pro that's Intel i7 based. So, we've looked at the unit itself. Let's put it off to the side and check what's in the box. It says designed by Apple in California. I'm sure there's stuff in there that I'm supposed to read, but I'm not going to. It's got a sticker as well, so if you're into stickers, you got stickers. Uh, you also have a AC cable, and other than that, I think it's empty. So, pretty basic. You got your power cord, and you've got your Mac Mini, and you got stickers. Yeah, shit, I'm just gonna put this on my Prius. That that that's a good look. All right, so I've been doing a lot of tests comparing this 2012 MacBook Pro to this brand new M1 Mac Mini. Now, it's pretty crazy, but this MacBook Pro has 16 gigs of memory and a one terabyte Samsung SSD and an Intel i7 processor. So it's a pretty quick computer, especially for its age. I have used this thing for years and it's never really let me down but it has been pretty slow, especially editing Sony a7S III footage or Red Raw footage. It definitely chokes on that. I have to make proxies 100% of the time to be able to play back on this. But on the brand new M1 Mac Mini, it can play back Red Raw and Sony a7S III footage pretty well without proxies in Adobe Premiere in the Intel based version of Adobe Premiere. So it's running on Rosetta. It's not even running on the new hardware yet. 
So this thing running on only eight gigabytes of memory and the little M1 processor in an unoptimized version of Adobe Premiere Pro is editing so much faster than this and I still do have to make proxies to be able to start editing and doing like heavy color grading and still get smooth playback in the Intel version of this but I have been experimenting with the beta version of Adobe Premiere on this and it is perfect. You do not have to make proxies at all. It's incredible. It's super fast, but it's beta, so there's still some glitches and issues. But I am super excited for when Adobe Premiere is native on the new M1 chip and on the unoptimized version of Adobe Media Encoder on this thing, you are getting super high speed render times. Like to render out on this computer, a three minute 4K video would take like two or three hours. On this, it takes like four or five minutes. I'm absolutely blown away that it's doing this on the unoptimized versions of Adobe apps. It is ridiculously fast. Even compared to a 2019 top of the line MacBook Pro, this thing is outperforming it in almost every way. I am super excited for when Adobe Premiere comes out and when Adobe Premiere is native on here. That is gonna be so crazy fast. So would I recommend buying this computer? 100% yes at like $700 that this one was, it is totally worth it. You were getting super high-end computer and editing performance, and this is the base model. I would say for most YouTube creators and smaller professionals, this is perfect. It has a small SSD inside, it's only 256 gigabytes, so there's a one terabyte SSD plugged in with USB-C right here, but it's fast, you can edit off of it. Now, there are some downsides about this computer for some people. It does not have a 10 gigabit ethernet port. So for people using servers and stuff that use ethernet like that, that's not gonna work, but I don't have a server like that, so I really don't care. And I'm sure most of you guys don't either. Now, when I was looking at buying a M1 Mac Mini for myself, I saw a lot of people saying they were having mouse issues where they would be moving around the mouse and it would just lag and glitch and have a bunch of issues. And I was like, eh, for the speed, I'm willing to risk it. I got it, hooked up my Logitech MX Vertical, and then I started using it. It was perfect at first, and then all of the problems started happening. It started glitching, it started lagging around the screen. I would move the mouse and it would go, <laughs> and it made it almost impossible to edit or do anything on the computer. So I looked around and I was like, what can I do to fix this? This is terrible. Then I came across the Logitech Options software, which is like a driver and customization tool for Logitech mice. And I looked on some forums and apparently installing that can help. So I installed Logitech Options on the computer and uh, started using it. And ever since for like a week, I haven't had a single issue with this mouse. And I have edited a couple of professional jobs and I have edited some YouTube videos and it has worked perfect. I have been moving this mouse around and it doesn't lag at all. So I can't say anything for other brands of mice, but if you have a Logitech mouse and you install options onto your new M1 Mac Mini, it's gonna help a ton and you're not gonna have those lagging issues. I'm also using the Magic Keyboard and I haven't had a single lagging issue. I haven't been writing novels on here, but I haven't had a lagging issue at all when using my keyboard shortcuts. It's been pretty good. The Bluetooth on here is working actually better than the Bluetooth on my 2012 MacBook Pro. So stay tuned for update videos as we start testing out the speeds in the optimized versions of Adobe software. Once beta is stable enough, I'm gonna start making some videos showing the raw performance of that app. It is insane. So make sure you subscribe so that you can watch more cinematic videos from me and updates on this M1 Mac Mini from the perspective of a professional videographer and filmmaker.